U.S. President Donald Trump is considering an additional $100 billion of tariffs against China. A statement released by the White House on Thursday night said China's retaliation to the first round of U.S. tariffs was unfair and would harm American farmers and manufacturers. Trump's threat, which would triple the level of tariffs already imposed, marks a new escalation in the U.S. trade dispute with China. Negotiations continue behind the scenes, but there are fears that the tariffs could have an impact on the global economy. At a UN Security Council meeting on Thursday night, there were smiles and a handshake between the Russian and British ambassadors, but no sign of lowered tensions. Russia has warned Britain that it was playing with fire by blaming it for poisoning a former spy and his daughter last month. We've told our British colleagues that you're playing with fire and you'll be sorry, said Vasily Nemenzia, the Russian ambassador to the UN. Novichok is not copyrighted by Russia, he said, in spite of the obviously Russian name. It's a name invented in the West for a line of toxic substances, which are nothing new for experts and scientists, and developed in many countries, including the US and Britain. But Britain defended its actions in the aftermath of the incident in the town of Salisbury, which has included expelling Russian diplomats and encouraging more than a dozen Western countries to do the same. We cannot ignore what has happened in Salisbury. We cannot ignore Russia turning a blind eye to the use of chemical weapons in Syria and in Salisbury. And we cannot ignore the way that Russia seeks to undermine the international institutions which have kept us safe since the end of the Second World War. Police cordons are still in place in Salisbury a month after the attack. Former Russian spy Sergei Skripal remains critically ill but stable in hospital, while his daughter Yulia is recovering. Tens of thousands of protesters have rallied in cities throughout Slovakia, demanding new elections and an independent investigation into the death of a journalist. The demonstrators voiced opposition to measures put in place by the newly sworn government and the delay in appointing a police chief. Their concerned corruption in the country is getting worse. We demand an independent investigation into the murder of Jan Kuchak and Martina Kuznirova and all the cases Jan worked on with the international team. Thousands of people took to the streets after the couple's murder, forcing the former Prime Minister and his Interior Minister out of office. Kujiak had been investigating the alleged misuse of European Union funds, which have boosted Slovakia's economic development, but also the amount of cash in circulation. He and his fiancée were shot dead at their home outside Bratislava in February. To date, no one has been charged. Future rallies are planned. The controversial cryptocurrency Bitcoin hit a new record high of above $5,000 on Thursday, making it four times more expensive than an ounce of gold. At the start of this year, it was worth $966, but its market capitalization is now close to the total assets at Goldman Sachs. Some investors are warning of a bubble, but with near unprecedented returns, many are piling in. Of private Russian military contractors were killed, possibly up to 200. U.S. officials estimate the death toll at around 100, with up to 300 injured. They were unable to say how many are Russians. Russian media said the private contractors were part of pro-government forces that advanced on oil fields in the eastern Der Ozor province and were targeted by the United States. The reports cite activists who say at least four Russian citizens were killed in Syria on Wednesday. If confirmed, the news could further inflame tensions between Moscow and Washington. U.S. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis says Russia's told the U.S. there were no Russians in the area of the strike. Mattis said he saw the news reports about Russian contractors possibly being casualties of the bombing. Ties between the two countries are already... Donald Trump said he had no knowledge of a $130,000 payment made by his lawyer Michael Cohen to the adult film star Stormy Daniels. The money was allegedly paid for her to keep quiet about a sexual encounter she says she had with Trump 12 years ago. Did you know about $130,000? Asked by reporters on Air Force One if he knew about the transaction, Trump said no, adding that they would have to ask Michael Cohen why he made the $130,000 payment. 
Asked again if he knew where his lawyer got the money, Trump again replied, "No, I don't know." Daniels last month sued Trump's lawyer to be released from a non-disclosure agreement she signed in exchange for the payment. The White House has denied Trump had sex with her. Thousands of Google employees have signed a petition urging the company to pull out of a project which harnesses artificial intelligence and could improve drone targeting. The employees are outraged Google's technology could be used by the Pentagon's Project Maven to better identify both targets and civilians. They also want the company to announce a policy that it will never build warfare technology, reminding Google the company motto is "Don't be evil." Google have responded to the petition by claiming the technology is intended to save lives and people from having to do highly tedious work. People in Brazil have been reacting to the news that former President Lula da Silva will have to go to prison on corruption charges. A court narrowly rejected an attempt by his lawyers to keep him out of jail while he appeals the verdict. Lula leads the polls in October's upcoming election, and the case has divided the country. A thief must go to jail. Few thieves have been arrested in Brazil. Many others need to be arrested. This decision is ridiculous because it was applied to only one person. As if Lula were the only thief in this country, and we know that there are many more of them in their houses, happy and content. Lula's case has become like a big soccer dispute. Lula's jailing would prevent him standing in the presidential election. Though the case has divided the nation, he still commands considerable support. He argues that the charges against him are politically motivated to stop him standing. The American company AMC is to open a cinema in Saudi Arabia later this month, the first in the deeply conservative Muslim kingdom in over 35 years. The plan is to open 40 cinemas across the country over the next five years. The company is aiming for a billion dollars a year in ticket sales. Unlike other public arenas, the cinemas will not be segregated according to gender. Just like the lifting of the driving ban on women, this latest move is seen as another step in the economic and social reforms being implemented by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. The cinema is due to open on April the 18th in Riyadh, and the first film to be shown will be Black Panther. At least three people were arrested as scuffles broke out between police and indigenous rights protesters outside the Commonwealth Games opening ceremony on Australia's Gold Coast. The arrest came as protesters tried to storm the venue's gates to get into the event, which was attended by Britain's Prince Charles, his wife Camilla, and Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull. We're going to show them that this Commonwealth Games shouldn't be here. Earlier, a group of indigenous rights activists had blocked the path of the Commonwealth Games baton, forcing organisers to change the relay's route. First, the celebrations. Now, Carlos Puigdemont's lawyers are busy organising the handover of 75,000 euros in bail to German courts. Money that should enable the former Catalan leader to walk free from jail later this morning. Of course, we are very glad that Mr. Pigmont is free, and we have full confidence and trust the German justice. The conditional freedom comes after the courts ruled that under German law, Pigmont could not be extradited on charges of rebellion. And that lesser charges of embezzlement do not merit imprisonment. Tenemos un momento para un espacio comercial. Ahora nos toca ver nuestro informe deportivo.